on YouTube. Um, right, um, I've been watching a, a few people's videos recently, um, and I've seen you know, various bits of kit that people got, and so on. Uh, I do like making my own little bits and bobs now and then if I think I can pull it off, you know. Um, there's a chap on here, 51 Foxy, I'm pretty sure a few of my subscribers have subscribed to him. If not, get over to his channel, it's pretty cool. Um, but he uses a, a hammock chair, which I kind of like the look of, you know. Um, gets you off the ground, it's comfy, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, basically, I've got an old hammock. It's, um, it's a tenth one to one. Because I use like the the extra large, which is the main one that I use. So, but I've got another one, which is smaller. Um, I was just going to lose this one in one of the bulkheads on my small canoe, my 12 foot. But um, thinking about it, I just thought, no, I'm going to try and attempt to make a hammock chair out of it, just by um, sewing it up a little bit, you know, just folding it up. Take a piece off. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna have a go. Um, my little uh, sewing machine. I'm not brilliant at it, but you know, I, I have had a play with it. It's just keeping it in a straight line. Really, it does it itself. <laughs> um, and that's the hammock. Um, just try and get that. Yeah. Basically, what I've done, I've folded over the bottom to where I think roughly the size I want. I think I might have gone a bit extreme. I think it might be a bit big, but I'll see. But, um, but what I'm going to do with this bottom bit, instead of just making a small hem so I can just chuck a line through and string it like a small hammock, if you like, I'm actually going to have a bigger loop in the bottom so I can actually, if I want to make it like a tripod chair, um, it's in like Silver Fox doing before. Um, I've made one out of dry wood before and just put sticks in as you know to sit on. But I'm going to make a bigger loop so I can actually run a you know a fair bit of timber through it, you know, like a length of branch or what have you through the bottom of it as well. If I wanted to do like a tripod chair, but I could also have a bit of the line which I cut off of this years ago, which I've still got left. Um, I can also string it as a small hammock, use it as a cargo hammock. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those. I can use it for a couple of different things, which is quite cool. So I'm gonna have a go at that. I'm off to the woods tomorrow anyway, so I'll get to try it out. So what I'll probably do is just sew that all up today. I won't cut it off yet, that piece. I'll wait until I get to the wood and try it out before I, you know, cause I can always unpick it at the end of the day and then adjust it if it's too big but uh yeah i'll see how it goes so uh, yeah i'm gonna crack on with that um i won't video me using the sewing machine it's gonna be noisy and yeah there'll probably be a, a few um inappropriate words so uh you know there is younger viewers and I don't want to embarrass myself. So uh, yeah, I'll catch you in a minute and let you know what it looks like when I've done it. Go Steve. Right, I've managed to pull that off. Uh, I don't think you're going to be able to see this very well on this camera. But uh, yeah, I've done a really tight stitch. It's a lot tighter than um, <coughs> how they sew up the ends, if you know what I'm saying. I have no idea what the stitches are called. I just got it on number six, <laughs> which is a really tight stitch. Do you know what I mean? There's, I think there's about a millimetre gap between each stitch loop. I think the loops are only, hang on mate, I need the bins on to see this. Uh, yeah, the stitch is about two mil wide tops with uh, yeah, one mil space in between. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to run three of those. I'm going to have about, I don't know, five, four or five mil gap. And then I'm going to run another one alongside it 
and do it again three times. And I'd like to see that loop there. I mean, I can get my hand in it. Do you know what I mean? So, like I say, I can always run a, a rope through that, or the, the, the tape that came with it. Um, or I can get a decent sized piece of timber in there, you know. I ain't got a faff, faff around trying to get, you know, Johnny. Obviously, I wouldn't use something that thick, but don't need nothing that thick to make a tripod chair. But yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, so that's going all right. But before I cut off this loose end, I'll check it out tomorrow at the wood. I'll video it, see if it if it works out all right. And if it does, I'll cut it off there and then. Um, yeah, and just tidy up the ends when I come back. Or I'll just be patient and wait until I come home and I'll put a nice little hem on it, you know, like you do. But yeah, so anyway, I'm going to attempt to have a go at doing that. The cotton I'm using is, um, yeah, it's just a stronger, you know, it's not the one that the sort of just normal black cotton, it's just something a bit stronger that I've used in the past, you know. But uh, this sewing machine thing is great because it just does it itself, sucks it in, and you've just got to keep it, um, you know, sort of levelish. So uh, I'll should do this bit and go, you can have a little go, have a little look, sorry. You can see it. There we go. It's cool. I don't know how it's in the past. Drag it out now and I'm going to have to do. So, hey, I'll just follow that line down. There's a little uh, mark on this metal foot. So, if I keep it on that, it should go straight. It does go a lot faster than this, but um, I'm not that experienced in it, so there you go, right. Okay, there you go. Getting my confidence up a little bit now. past it because I've got a button on this thing that makes it go backwards. Cool. Um, what that does, it locks off the, the uh, locks the thread off. So cool. Right. I don't know if you're going to see that. Double 
double stitch. Didn't do too bad. I mean, it's not perfectly straight. Means, but Three will be more than that adequate, right? The other cool thing is with this hammock, it's the one with the double skin, you know. So, uh, yeah, I might stick a cut down a bit of old roll mat, stick that in there. Job done. At the beginning of the stitch, you just tie these off, I think. Just to lock it off, you know what I mean? Cut the overhand knots. I suppose I could have done that backwards thing at the beginning and then run it forward again. I mean that would a lot to do with
see that. A little bit pissed, but. Next, I've got three lines of stitching in there. Just gonna, you know, give that a stem. So I'll let you know how this pans out tomorrow. So there's the little loops. I normally have just have a beaner going through there. I have I've used this with whoopies before. So yeah, I'll try and give it a size. Cheers for that, and cheers uh, 51 Foxy, gave me the idea, and uh, I mean I did have a little butchers around, you know, you can buy them, ready made, um, there was one on one side of us, it was a bit small really, you know, but at least this, not to say I can chuck a, I can't remember where the other loop's gone, but, you know, once I've cut that tail off tomorrow, you know, I can use this as a small, you know, cargo hammock to, you know, so I can use it as a chair, use it as a cargo hammock, you know, so, a little multi-purpose thing, could be quite cool, and I can hang it as a hammock chair with the two ends if I like, or make the tripod chair, so, uh, yeah, cool. Not cool. Just let you know, I'll be doing another video um, this weekend. Um, I've got a 14 foot build to do. Um, I won't be filming the build, but um, be staying out in the wood. I'm using a different. I'll be using the tent wonder, the extra large tent wonder this time, um, which has got the whoopies on it and all the rest of it. Um, it's just one that I'm used to using, so I'm gonna video that. A friend's coming along with me. It would be his first time in a hammock. He's just picked up the DD tarp and DD um, travel hammock, the 2012 model, um, which I haven't seen in the flesh yet. You know, I've seen pictures of them. So yeah, he's going to be using that, and uh, I'm expecting rain as per usual. Um, you know, this morning, watched the sunrise. It was quite nice and all the rest of it, but you know, same as it is done the last few days. Just turns into a bang. So anyway, I'll um, be uploading that sort of Sunday night, maybe. I won't be getting back till Sunday daytime. Um, I just plan on doing the first couple of states of that build. I've got plenty of time to take time on that. But that's one of the builds that I'll be taking to the wilderness gathering. If anyone's going, I'm going to be there with um, the Woodlifers Makers Guild. Um, I was there last year and the year before. So I'm, I'm hoping to have the 14 foot built in time and I'm going to be building a, a 12 foot to take there as well. So I have two to take with me, plus my hobos. Um, I'm going to be doing some other little projects whilst I'm there, just fiddling about and making some strops um, and so on. But um, yeah, unfortunately my, my knife isn't going to be ready that I've had designed, it's still in the making. Um, Chap's really busy at the moment, but I've also just sent up another. I want a two piece knife kit, you know, which, um, which I think would be quite cool like a camp knife and a bushcraft stroke boat knife. It's just going to be a lot different than the average, um, well, your normal bushy knife. Um, yeah, but you'll see that within time. It's going to be a little while before I get that sorted. Um, the other little projects that I'm doing. I'm um, building, well, I'm not building, I'm having, I'm designing some um, open canoe luggage, basically, like, you know, not backpacks as such, but luggage that you can have within the, in the canoe. It's going to be made out of, like, canvas, um, 
I've just got to come up with some designs. I'm sort of looking around, you know, different designs, different bits and bobs, and but obviously put it into practice. I, you know, I've could have for many years, and I know what would work in the canoe, you know. Especially, you know, but obviously be versatile, so they can fit on all sorts of different types of gunnel, because mine have got these spaces in, so they're easy to strap up, you know, but most, some other canoes just have like a solid gunnel. So the only things they lash to is their centre tool. Um, so yeah, I've got that to sort of take into consideration. But I'm looking at making sort of like a five bag luggage set to fit within the, the open canoe. Um, I'm almost done, and I'm making them myself and then I'll just take them off to a, um, like a seamstress type person. Someone local, you know, give them some work just to knock up a few sets, you know what I mean? But, at, you know, it'll be much better quality than what I can make. Because um, I'm not, you know, I'm not a wizard making that, you know, using that kind of kit. I want it strong and, yeah, tough. So, anyway, that's another day, another time, another story. So, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, once again, thanks for everyone that's been subbing, you know, recently. It's been subbed to my channel. Um, take it easy. Get out there. Enjoy it. Rain or snow, who cares? You know, we're Britons at the end of the day. You know. I'm half Anglo-Saxon and half Roman, mate. So, you know, sod it. Rain, snow, I don't care. I'm going to be out there. So, uh, take it easy.